This pandemic has slashed jobs across this entire country, across the board. But I want to stress that it has hit minority communities especially hard. We barely survived the Great Recession of 2008. Uh, we, did, we, haven't, we lost our homes. Uh, we lost our jobs. We, re, we re-entered the, uh, the labor market through the gig economy and at the bottom rung. We've barely gotten back on our feet. And now here comes this pandemic. Minority-owned small businesses employ at least 8.7 million Americans across this country, according to the SBA. So what is being done to support those very businesses during this time of crisis? Joining me now, a man who knows the answer to this and a whole lot more, John Hope Bryan, entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Bryant Group Ventures and founder of Operation Hope, a not-for-profit organization providing financial literacy and economic education to people across this entire country. John, do you think enough is being done to support small minority-owned businesses? I think people have great intentions, Stephanie. First of all, thank you for all your great reporting. I think the Treasury Department has done an extraordinary job with uh, uh, setting up the 10th largest bank in America in 30 days with no business plan, as the congressman just said. But unfortunately, good intentions are not enough here. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that a lot of people are being left behind, uh, again, with the best of intentions. Uh, Dr. King, 57 years this month, April of this, uh, of this month, 57 years ago, wrote a letter over Birmingham jail. And he said, paraphrasing, that while other nations are leading with uh, you know, get like speed, we crawl with horse and buggy pace. He was talking about political independence and political inclusion. I'm talking about economic inclusion. We've got now actually buggy and no horse, uh, in the sense that you've got a lot of businesses, as the congressman said, well, you've got an accountant, you have a banking relationship. Well, minority owned businesses don't have an accountant and often don't have a banking relationship. And these rules are complicated. Uh, these rules are changing in, in a moment's notice, understandably so. Uh, and, and a lot of folks who didn't believe in government to begin with, checked out. Folks who didn't uh, know how to apply, never checked in. Uh, folks who applied and got it wrong, got checked out. Uh, and Operation Hope is stepping in that gap, provide critical coaching and counseling like the Starbucks of financial inclusion, a private banker you never had, to help those at the bottom to make sure they get into the service window at the bank. Uh, I'm also concerned, concerned, Stephanie, that this is not just going to be about minority and small businesses that are hurting. I think this is going to hate, hurt 80 percent of everybody, and 80 percent of everybody in this country uh, are going to need financial coaching and counseling before this is over. Uh, financial literacy really should be a civil rights issue in this in this nation, starting today. Hey, Mensa, you know I agree with that. I want to go to a question from a viewer, Janine Cook. She's the owner of Harriet's Bookshop in Philadelphia. Take a look. Hi, John. It's Janine, owner of Harriet's Bookshop in the Fishtown section of Philadelphia. My question is, how can we devise culturally relevant approaches so that we can make sure that all businesses, especially small and minority-owned businesses, are getting access to equitable and quality information? Thanks. Uh, first of all, I'm just, I just love it. It's a Black-owned bookstore, and uh, she's surviving, thriving, has the right attitude. Uh, it just makes it just warms my heart. That is half of America, Stephanie. Half of America works for a small business, and 20% of America works for one like hers with 20 employees or less. Is my guess. The answer uh, is really the the question is is really the golden goose here. And I've been telling the White House, and and I hope they're listening. I think they are. That you need a a, a, a plug and play on ramp. Operation Hope in 22 states. You need the Urban League. You need the Church of God in Christ. You need the AME Church. You know, Dr. T.D. Jakes, who I talked to last night. This, this is a cultural and trust bridge that already exists. Don't need to make it. It's nonpolitical. It's nonpartisan. Uh, and plug those folks in as federal trust agents to the federal government in the next two weeks uh, and equip them to be SBA on ramp to the fintech firms, to the, to the CDFIs, and to the banks for which Minority businesses don't have good relationships with Stephanie. They don't have these robust private banker relationships. A, a friend of mine called me, Stephanie, who is a, uh, a, a well-to-do, and he's got an accountant. 
uh, and they still can't figure out this stuff easily. Uh, and the bank is asking them, are you sure you're ready to apply? What happens when you don't have somebody like that on your side? So the, the young lady's question is ground zero for the answer. We've got to get a, uh, a national network of trusted advocates that are almost deputized by the federal government, put in place as national financial coaches immediately, qualified and credentials by HUD, by SBA, et cetera, so that we can coach up. The okay, John. Here. Yeah. There That's you. what we need to do. And that might potentially happen in the future. But we're in crisis right now. And that takes me from zero to below zero. We have a question from Terrence Dickinson. He's, owner, he's the owner of Terror Cafe in Baltimore. And he writes, what does a business in a community that never qualifies or loans or credit do in the midst of this crisis? How do we survive? Do we simply shut down? Uh, no, don't give up, don't give in. In fact, there's a rainbow after the storm coming to you and coming to everybody who survives this. What I want you to do right now is call Operation Hope. Our services are free. You're gonna get a check from the federal treasury this week or next. You get at least $10,000 if you don't traditionally qualify for your loan or your nonprofit. So make sure you go apply. Everybody watching your program, please, I can't say it enough, go apply. Apply through your local bank. You don't have to have a banking relationship. You don't have to have a credit relationship with them. Every bank's criteria is different. If you're confused, call us and get the earned income tax credit. This is as much as $10,000 in your pocket in the next 30 days. It has nothing to do with the federal relief program. If you make less than $54,000 uh, or somebody in your family, you, you, approve, you approve for this if you work. And it's, a, and it's, a, it's retroactive for three years. That's as much as $10,000 in addition to the other programs that may be available to you. There's also city programs there. State program, not just a federal program that, that, that folks don't know about. Um, and, and then think about how you can deliver your service from home, in place, the people who are at home. Uh, and I think reimagine your business plan, you might find you actually grow your business versus see it constrict. Do not give up hope. Absolutely. You got, you got to pick up the phone. You got to call the banks. Maybe go to John's website, Operation Hope. John, thank you for making us better and smarter. Thank you for helping us see that rainbow at the end of the storm. John Hope Bryan, I appreciate you joining me, and I appreciate you watching at home. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.